Up next, we have Bill Schufeld, who's the founder of Athletic Brewing Company. Bill, how are you? Right, it's great to see you. Great Thanks to see you me. as well. I mentioned I'm the editor and producer of uh, Taste Radio, our podcast. I know you're a big fan. Yeah, I'm a bash, super fan of the podcast. Definitely yeah. recommend it. I know everyone. our producers are going to want to hold your, hold your mic a little bit higher. Yes. So uh, thank you for being such an avid listener, and thanks for being here at BevNet. Um, what is Athletic Brewing for folks at home who are not familiar with uh, the company? And it's interesting because normally we don't have beer companies here, but uh, tell us why it, ma it makes sense. Yeah, there's a ton of crossover in the world these days, and uh, I do just want to say thank you. Two years ago at your conference, there weren't anyone picking up our phone calls, and uh, you guys at BevNet definitely did. Yourself, John Landis, have been huge advocates in giving us advice, so super appreciated. Of that. course, of course. We love great products and great brands, so. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Athletic Brewing is all about great tasting beer for the modern adult. Um, it's great craft beer, very clean label, low in calories, just happens to be non-alcoholic beer, which until very recently has been a very controversial, highly stigmatized product category. Um, and we've really found that there is a whole conversation of adults out there waiting for healthier drinking options that offer the complexity of premium craft beer. It just was something that hasn't been being met up until now. Um, totally. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, if you think about it and talk, hear the words non-alcoholic beer, you'd be like, ew. You know, it's just like something you wouldn't, you just, the expectation that it wasn't, it wasn't going to taste good. And the approach that you guys have taken has been one of a very high quality taste and flavor. Um, tell us about that process. I mean, what makes your, what makes your brand special? Um, and how do you get that flavor to be at or near the level of any great craft, ta great tasting craft beer? Absolutely. It all, um, it really starts with our co-founder, John Walker. Um, as I said a couple of years ago, no one was picking up our phone calls to uh, discuss this category. And John was someone who immediately got this idea. He's a highly awarded, really talented brewer, um, also a great cook, has really good recipe talent. Probably the most talented person to ever turn his sights on the non-alcoholic sector. Um, and me and him homebrewed hundreds of batches together trying to fine tune our recipe and process. Um, the baseline for where we started was that if these industrial dealkalization techniques worked, people would be doing it and craft brewers would be doing it everywhere. So we went back to the textbook level and our baseline is brewing beer that we don't have to dealkalize. So we have just the natural brewing ingredients with unadulted character. Um, how they're meant to taste is fully fermented, like fully fermented, all the esters and compounds of fermentation just happens to be under 0 0.5. Yeah, and it's, it seems like the timing is perfect for your brand and non-alcoholic beer in general. As we heard today in the New Beverage Showdown um, and on stage with some of the investors, uh, the idea of a non-alcoholic cocktail or cocktail alternative or beer alternative is really gaining traction. Um, what's your consumer education strategy? You know, How are you approaching the market with uh, your product, your brand. Is it taking a lot to really get people on your side or is it becoming a lot easier? Well, the product really grew authentically out of uh, acute need in our lives. Um, there was no beverages to meet these healthy occasions in our active lifestyles, our serious professional careers, and that evolving modern lifestyle. Craft beer is great. We're not a soapbox company at all and there's all those occasions. Uh, those occasions just weren't being met in the beer world with 40% of adults not drinking these days. Um, in terms of the education, it was really a conversation that was happening. It, the products just weren't out there. We were definitely scared that the education hurdle was going to be huge and we were ready to put in that work. And we did by sponsoring 65 athletic events last year. Um, we are constantly out in the field, either sponsoring athletic events, in grocery stores, doing taproom events. Uh, we have an all non-alcoholic taproom. Um, but we've really found that meeting consumers where they are, at the finish lines of races where they're having a great time, we give out thousands of beers, tell them about our product, give them merchandise and beer. Um, and they understand and it. I mean, yeah. they're, they're understanding it's a non-alcoholic beer. There's not a lot of, and that's going to taste good. I mean, what's that process like? It's, it's a laugh reel, really. I mean, yeah. non-alcoholic beer has a massive stigma. Sure. And like, we like to call them athletic beers because it frames it in a positive light and really empowers the consumer. Um, the first approach to a new customer is either, I've been waiting for this, 
or it's absolutely laugh in your face. But the turnaround is incredible. As long as you get the beer in their hand, people get it, they enjoy it. And I can't tell you what a high percentage of people walk back up to our booth and re-engage us after and are like, I can drink these at night and then hang out with my kids, do work later on. I could drink these at the beach. I can, like, really the occasion base spans all ages and populations. Um, with the young parents who are active being like probably the number one demographic. Yeah. yeah the name of the company is Athletic Brewing, so you'd yeah. assume there's a lifestyle, uh, there's a, a fitness lifestyle component to it. But is the brand resonating with folks outside of that uh, sort of sphere? Yeah, we're, we're definitely trying to make the brand as inclusive as possible. Um, using the words athletic was to empower consumers. So when they were in a bar and restaurant and chose to have non-alcoholic beer, it was from a positive place. They could say, I'm training, I want to feel good, I want to eat healthy. Um, and we've been very conscious not to make this for elite athletes only. Even though a lot of elite athletes actually are drinking and asking us to mail them beer, um, I myself am like the target consumer and I run nine minute miles and I just like being out there for the experience. Yeah. You guys are growing pretty fast yeah. too. Um, just on Instagram, you brought in uh, a bunch of new equipment. Um, how's that going? And you know, what are your expectations for growth going forward? Uh, growing pains are definitely real, as yeah. we heard from Oatly upstairs before. Um, it's, it's been incredibly exciting, incredibly challenging. Those challenges are fun. We did just double our footprint and capacity, um, and we're looking to go beyond that. Um, our numbers should be up about 10x this year over what they were last year. Great. Pretty much in every state from Pennsylvania to Maine at this point. Fantastic. Uh, uh, we only have a couple seconds left, but you know, you mentioned coming to this event brings, uh, you know, gets you get a lot of out, you get a lot out of coming to this event. You know, what does it mean to you? What are some of the things that you're looking for uh, at a BevNet Live that you've been able to use in your everyday business? For sure, it's I've met everything from investors at BevNet to um, distribution partners, just good relationships in the industry. I mean. There's a whole network of entrepreneurs, suppliers, vendors here. They, once you meet them in person, you can then email and ask very basic questions that might take you a lot of research on your own. Um, and then, especially meeting you guys, uh, it's just the, the value of connections and just honest dialogue with people. The second you pretend to know everything about anything is when you shut yourself off, essentially. So. Totally. Well, thank you so much for saying that. And Congratulations on everything you've built this far with Athletic Brewing, and uh, good luck with everything going forward. I know we'll be watching. It's going to be fun. Thank you for having me. Indeed. Really Thanks so much, Bill. Me. Thanks.